well, guys, you're in for a little bit of a treat today. I have somebody sat right opposite me. So that's as good as it gets. I'm a bad influence. Hi, I'm Gabby, and welcome back to another edition of The Fragrantition, where here on this channel we talk about perfumes, good smells, bad smells. Some may perceive things as bad smells, whereas others perceive it as good smells. But today we are talking about my not top ten. Well, these probably are ten fragrances that are all based on the note of tuberose, and my nose is itching now. And well, you know I love tuberose, don't you? You know that tuberose is one of my favourite floral notes. It can be horrible to some, it can be good to others. But let me know what you think. What are your favourite tuberose face? Let's deal with what this nose has. So today I have a fellow guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sorry? Would you like to introduce yourself? Well, your husband, you know. Yes, I know that. So, yes, he doesn't want to appear in front of the camera. That's how supportive he gets. So, just bear with. But he is going to smell these scents and tell me what he thinks of them. Now, he knows that I love tuberoses, a white floral. And all of these tuberoses, the star player, I would say. So the first one I'm going to talk about is, and my nose keeps itching like anything, is this one here. It is called Varencia White. And I know it looks like a little bit of a geisha bottle. But, darling, could you pass me those, please? My trusted companion. So I'm just going to pop them down there. So we're not going to test this on skin. We are going to test these on paper or fabric here. So, this is actually what I do like nail wipe cleans. So, this is Varencia White. Now, I'm going to spray it. And then, if you could smell that for me, what do you think of that one? What kind of comes into your mind when you think of it? I mean, let's face it, the bottle I love. Some people may think it's tacky, but I love it. It's quite strong, isn't it? Mm. On first spray, it is strong. Mm. It is the tuberose, the white floral, but it's got vanilla in there as well. So as it dries down, it sweetens. Right. Let me have a look on Fragrantica. Oh, here we go. So, what kind of smell are you getting from it? I don't know. I only know whether I like it. <laughs> That's what I know. That's do you like it? I do. Right, okay. Um, it's not one of my favourites, though. Okay. Why do you say that? So there must be something. So, you like it a lot, but you don't love it. No, I wouldn't say I like it a lot. Oh. I'm not saying it. You just like it. I like it. Okay. Yeah. Out of, where it goes. For the strength of it, from what you're smelling, would you say it's strong? Would you say it's weak? Um, yeah, okay, I, would I, you, I would imagine it's quite strong. So. Yeah. It's got top notes of neroli, peach and apple. Tuberose orange blossom, and in the dry down, you get vanilla musk and sandalwood and tonka bean. But I think when I first smell this, oh, I, pop that down there. I like it the longer it's on, it's getting better. Mm, it's, it's quite a bright fragrance when you first smell it. I don't really get apple, but I get kind of like a bit of a fruity smell, but then it goes down into a white floral of the tuberose, which I love. See, I like it now. Right, okay. Now, now? Claude is I on my lap that. here. Mm. Out of ten, what would you say you would rate that? It's not one of my most favourites, so I don't think you'd probably give that a six. Six. And do you think it would be, what occasion or what time of the day would you say is more suitable for? Although fragrance has no agenda, I know. 
I don't see it as a nighttime fragrance. You see it more as a daytime I see it fragrance. More daytime, yeah. Right, okay. This was a recent acquisition. But is it yeah. Expensive? Well, look at the bill. No, we won't go into that. No, it's under twenty it was it's under twenty five pounds. Oh, I like it a lot. Yes, I know he would say that. This is a fifty mil bottle. So yeah, as a daytime fragrance I would wear that. So Ferencia white. Eau de parfum. Let's go on to the next one. Now this one is complete opposite although it's a tuberose scent it's a complete opposite of what i would say the previous one is now it's even stronger yeah. still. <laughs> it is on opening it's a blast mm. a blast it's quite what well, how would you describe it in the opening i'd love to get your reaction to this I'm going to type and see what the notes. I don't know. I just know it is quite a strong scent with regards to what, what's in it. I don't really know. Um, so it's by Serge Luton's. It's one of my favourite brands. Oh, right. So it's got a cacophony of notes. So there's obviously tuberose, the white floral of tuberose. There's another white floral, jasmine, clove, nutmeg. Would you say it's sweet or not? No, I don't think it's sweet. Person. No. Would it be daytime or nighttime? Again, I think it would be daytime. I don't really see it as a nighttime. Really? You say daytime because it's a strong scent. Unless so would it's you... going to change as it comes down. Maybe. Because it's not a scent that really is for wallflowers. It's for... Oh, yeah. It is definitely for a... Well, you're looking at her. It's not everybody's cup of tea. It's got orange blossom, musk, vanilla, hyacinth, nutmeg, clove, jasmine, and tuberose. But would you say it's unisex? No. Personally, from my point of view, I'd say no, but... So, suitable for more male or female? Female. See, this is where Rich and I kind of like disagree about fragrances. He will, well, what's your take on fragrances, would you say? Do you think fragrances are, I mean, unisex or do you think? Certainly. It's, uh, it's, it's so difficult because obviously I feel we live in a conditioned environment and brands will target different a different audience you know a different yeah, male female whatever do you what do you like it again i would only rate it about five or six right five or six okay i'll have that one back you haven't found my so, favorite yet yeah it's it's a little bit medicinal as well. Yes, I could smell that. Yeah, that camphorous. Camphorous. It's, it's slightly camphorous. That might it's, be why it's not one of my yeah, great it's, ones. It's, it reminds me a little bit. It's very slightly TCP. <laughs> well, it costs a lot more than TCP. <laughs> yes. I'm not even going to mention the price. That's what, yeah, exactly. I've had it a long time, though, so, you know, probably just skimmed over it. So next one, let's go for a yet another completely different one. So that one, as you'd say, would be about five and a half out of ten. Yeah. And the one previous, six out of ten. Yeah, about five. that, yeah. This one now is called So Scandal by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Now, it does have raspberry in, but it has the tuberose in there. And I get very different to the last one, don't you mm. think? Yes. What's your opinions or thoughts on that one? I like this much more. This is the out of the, the three this you is tested. Number three, so, isn't it? So yeah. This is the best one yet so far. So, would you say what kind of setting would you wear it? Yeah, I would say this would be like an evening going out for a meal or something really? like that. Yeah. 
We have, actually, I would wear this in the daytime as well as the yeah, evening. Yeah, I'm not saying you can't. As well as the I'm evening. I'm not saying you can't, but you, if you asked but, me yeah, to say it's best in, I would have said it would be nicer. When you say going out in the evening, do you mean in an open environment or more of a closed environment? Would I you think say it would, would work you... in both, but I think it would be much nicer in, like, say, a restaurant, a restaurant than a like than a bar or, a or than a bar or, or a nightclub. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so out of ten, how do you rate "So Scandal" by Jean Paul Gaultier? I like it. It's definitely better than the other, the other two. two. So I reckon seven and a half. Okay, you're being. Kind, you've been quite kind. I really do like this. I've had this a long time. I would repurchase it. It's middle of the price range. Um, this is just a thirty mil. Why don't you want to tell me the price? Why middle of the price range? Just tell me how much it is. Well, I, I don't know. I don't even look at the figures sometimes. Oh, I so yeah, I know you do. Yeah, I married him. For a lot of reasons. So, next one, my nose is itching again. Now, this one is what I would call a solid floor, and by that, it's just like all based upon one note. This one is called Tuberose by Monotherm. Monotherm. Very inexpensive. This scent, I would say. That's all I'm saying. So, what's your so what's your thoughts on Tuberose by Monotherm? Monotem. It's an Italian brand. You can see the similarity of that white floral of two bros running in all of them. Mm, yeah. But this one is, I think, just. It might have a bit of musk in there as well. But do you like the bottle? Yeah. Um yeah, it's okay. It's okay. nothing special about the bottle. No. Really, is it? What about the juice? What do you think of the juice? Is it better than the others, or is it just as good as you tested, or worse? Yeah. I would, yeah. Um, I would think maybe about the same as the last one. That you seven and a half out about of seven ten. Seven and a half for that one. This isn't as... Would you say this is... I would think this could be slightly stronger than the last one. A bit more powerful. Okay. Personally, it ha does have good um, longevity, and this yeah, is a, that's a, I could see that. In and this is a eau de toilette as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, don't be fooled, folks. You think, oh, eau de toilette's going to be weaker. Sometimes ugh, it can be just as strong, or if not stronger. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So seven and a half for yeah, Tuberose by Monothem so. Fragrances. Okay, so we've done four so far. Next one. Right now, this, this is Michael Kors, the original Michael Kors, and this is a pre-reformulated version, which I procured from a private seller on eBay at a good steal, at a good price. So, I do not like about this fragrance, and it, I've been told it happens with this bottle design, not just this bottle. This sprays from the atomizer here. Now, if I show you, yeah, it's such a poor sprayer. So, you might think, oh my god, she's spraying a lot, but I'm not. If I could open that somehow. I don't know how, but I don't know how I could really, and just pour it in another bottle because it leaks as well. What do you think of this one? Let's have a look and look at the notes because I want to see what else is. I'm intrigued. What else is in this fragrance? I'm not sure I like it as much as the other Okay. Ones. I think we're back to a six, maybe. Right. So, would you say it's a sexy fragrance or not? Not for me, personally. What would it be great for? What kind of setting? Is it is it more spring, summer, autumn, winter? This has got a 
very strange mix of notes. I could see it in like an office. Oh, right, okay. Because it's freesia Chinese osmanthus, which is like a yellow floral, and it's got incense in it, as yeah. well as tuberose. You've got lily, peony, and in the base, musk, woody notes, and Tahitian vetiver. So it's a little bit earthy as well from the vetiver as it dries down. Yeah. So, no, you're not really impressed by that one. No, not really. This was... I see, I really like it. You see, our tastes are so different. I really do like it. And now they've reformulated this bottle, this version, and I think it's a bit of a shadow of its former self. So so out of 10, you would give Michael Kors, be honest. Five. Five, the lowest so far. Your favourites so far are Jean-Paul Gaultier, and the black one. Was it the black no, one? not the black one. That's that that one you was you said smelt um like TCP. Oh right, sorry. Oh my nose. So we've got two burrows. These two at the moment are your favourite. Well, okay. So we're gonna put them down on this side as favourites. Anything of six and above, well no, anything of that you really like, I'll put them on one side, and the ones you don't like, I'll put on the other side. Well, I wouldn't even say those that I really like, them, but they're the best of what you've got. Well, you gave them so seven far. and a half out of ten. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're not a nine or a nine and a half or anything like that. Right. Either. Okay, next one. Let's go to this one. This is a niche brand and it's called trnp and it's called the board b-a-w-d it's right when i wore this once you said that you'd never smell anything like it before so it is a you very way or a bat? i don't know in, in all honesty these are highly natural they've got a lot of natural ingredients in them what trnp is renowned for So what do you think of the board? Mm. Oh, it's not on Fragrantica's website. Okay. So what do you get from it? Makes me think a little bit of like outdoors, like mm. in the woods. Perhaps, yeah, or see, it's like getting, that. Uh, yeah. It is a strong scent when I've worn it. It's got good projection. Mm. See, it might be different on these little things. That you yeah, can so I know on, on, the skin. on fabric or paper, obviously it's going to be different than it is on the skin because your own skin chemistry is going to alter it or whether, you know, some people's skin chemistry can alter the longevity or the projection of fragrances. Well, as well, yes. And as long as you moisturise well. So what would you give that? Uh, I would... A seven. I'll go a with seven. seven. So everything has been between five and seven and a half so Yeah, you far. haven't found anything that's really knocked my socks. <sighs> okay, right. So TRNP, the board. It's got two burrows. It's got... Wow. Yeah, you see, now on skin, it smells completely different. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So that could be misleading. You see, you could spray it on you and it would mm. give it a much better rating. Yes. Possibly. But then it's finding a piece of my skin and then you've got everything going on here. Uchi so. Bloom, but it is called Netare di Fiore. Now this, I had the original, but I decluttered it because I think this one I preferred myself. But I'll just have a look oh, at the notes. Is it Uchi Bloom Natari Di Fiore? Right, okay. It's white floral. What else are you picking up in it? Would you say it's sweet? Would you say it's animalic? Would you say it's. I would think it's probably quite a sweet. 
um, right It's got jasmine and honeysuckle in it, as well as tuberose. So it is abundant in white florals. Mm. As it opens up, it's got ginger and rose, tuberose, jasmine, honeysuckle, honeysuckle, and then a note called Rangoon Creeper. I know, there is such a note as Rangoon Creeper. It's meant to be a sweet and fruity floral and intoxicating. That's what it says. See, again, I think this smells a lot different on your skin than it does. I like it on this, but I think it smells better on your skin. So if it had been on your skin, mm. it may have rated higher. This is a flanker of the original Gucci Bloom. This is meant to be more of an intense perfume. But I would say I get moderate longevity out of this. Where do you think I could wear it? I think that would be okay daytime. I yeah. That would be a daytime. I would wear this daytime or nighttime. Mm. It's an any occasion type of scent, yeah, whether you're going for a it, brunch yeah. or a lunch or, so like, you know. You could only take one perfume with you or something like that. Yeah. I think it would do. And I think it's been discontinued now as well, so I'm glad I got my hands on the 100ml bottle because it is only, I last on my skin about four or five hours, I would say, and the projection is about, up to arm's length, and then it kind of gets a bit closer to the skin after about an hour and a half, two hours. But it creates a nice little scent bubble. So it performs okay. So out of 10, what would you say for Gucci Bloom Natara di Fiori? Didn't I rate it just now? I thought I had. Um, did he? I don't know. If I did, I forgot why I rated it. So I'm going to go for an 8. An 8 out yes. of 10. So this is a big like. Yes, it's definitely um, the best one you've shown me right. yet. Right, okay, so we've got but one, again, two, three, it would four. Be better on the skin. I know that it's better on your skin. Right, yeah, because you've smelt it on my right. skin. So let's try this one. Oops, no, I don't want that. So this one is called Tuberes Vetigineurs by Molinard. Now, So what do you think? I'm not sure about this. Would you, would you say it's... I'm waiting for it to settle a little bit because it's still quite... Quite strong. Yeah. It is strong in the opening. It's got peach blossom and coconut blossom in the top. I don't get that. Tuberose, jasmine, rose petals, and then in the base, sandalwood, cedar, white musk, and amber wood. So as it dries down, it becomes a bit more of a floral, woody scent. Then I would probably like it as it dries down, Because yes. you quite like woody scents, I, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. What kind of setting do you think? Would you say, is it fresh? Is it spicy? Is it... I think it's quite a fresh fragrance. Mm. And where would where would I wear this? Where would one wear this? I think you could wear that really wherever you wanted to. Daytime, Daytime evening again. Evening. So out of ten, yeah. Just on first impressions, eight and a half. Even more than Gucci Bloom Natara yes. di Fiori. Yes, because as it dried down. It, I'm not sure what it's like now, but as it was drying down, it was getting better and better. Right, okay. So the beauty is in the dry down in that fragrance. It is though. Givenchy Lanterdi. This is a Givenchy fragrance. Now, I know Richard and I, we both, well, even Richard, both loves. Would you like, do you like Givenchy? Givenchy, yes. yes. You know I do. I yeah, know. yeah I he loves Givenchy, Givenchy fragrances. So, so does yeah, he the, top is quite sweet so it's got mm -hmm. pear and bergamot in the top but then you come down to the white florals of tuberose orange blossom and jasmine sandback which is more of an indolic kind of floral then in the base patchouli vanilla vetiver and ambroxan which is a scent molecule to give it longevity what do you think of that one then this one a lot. This is the best one you've given me yet. So far, yeah. Yeah. This is a nine. 
a nine out of ten. This one is, yeah. Yeah. Sure. I've worn this. Whenever I've worn this, I've had a lot of compliments from people. Where would I wear it? Any when you want. I don't see it being a problem. Exactly. I've worn it to work. I've worn it in the evening. Um, now, some pe I don't get this. Some people, when they smell tuberose and the way it's done in perfumery, some people say, oh, it smells a bit like bubble gum. Now, I don't get bubble gum. No, I'm not smelling no. that. No, you don't get I, I don't know where this bubble gum vibe comes from. It's just obviously a sweetness, the way it's blended. It's lovely, isn't it? It's very nice. It's definitely the best you've given me yet. Yeah, it's... Would you say I don't want to call it a mass appealing scent, but because what is it what is the one thing about it you like? I I just think it's an upmarket fragrance. Okay. I think it is elegant. If you smell it, yes, you think, oh, that's nice. Right. Okay. Okay. So nine out of ten for Givenchy Lantardy then. So okay. this one, the next one, Carnal Flower by Frederick Mal Fragrances. Dominique Ropion is the nose behind this. Now. I know I've smelt it on your skin before. I'm pretty sure it smells better on your skin than it does. Yes, it it and this is the thing, when you're testing fragrances. It doesn't smell bad on this bit of paper. But, but it's I better on... It's right, better let's just... I'm going to spray a little bit there. Let that waft. Yeah, they warm up a second or two. And then you can smell it on my skin. So, carnal flower... I would say this fragrance is quite an opulent scent. It's got tuberose. See, now on my... Yes, that's better than it is on this piece of paper. Yeah. It's quite a strong scent. It's got eucalyptus in it as well. Jasmine, coconut, orange blossom. It's got ylang ylang, which is a yellow floral. White musk. And it's got a little bit of melon in there as well. But I don't really smell the melon. I smell the tuberose, the eucalyptus, and a bit of the coconut. Out of 10, what would you rate it? It's getting better all the time. So, yeah. This goes a little bit sweeter on my skin as well. Mm. And I don't know if that's picking up from the coconut. It's kind of it's kind of making me think of Corfu. Okay. So would I wear it in the summer? Or I mean, it, it is a strong scent and people would say, Oh, I'd never wear that this day. But where would so I Corfu? Yeah. When I smell it, it just takes me back to when we was in Corfu. Okay. And I kind of remember similar smells. Right. When okay. We were in Corfu. Yeah. So but it's it's, it's, it's very outdoorsy. Mm. And I like it. I yes. like it in that respect. Getting back to nature, or whatever that is. No. Nature to that's me is. That's got little. to be so far. That's got to be your best one. Isn't yeah, that's nine point five. That one. That really? One is, See now, yeah. I've always called this my queen of tuberose white florals because smell this now on my skin here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's definitely for me. That's definitely nine point. And you're being truthful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's, I don't think anything can, for a, tuber, for a tuberose, a realistic tuberose scent, carnal flower is, is just 
everything. It's got it's the stem of the flower. It's got it's a bit green. It's lush. Mm. I would say personally, I think that's a summer fragrance. Okay, right, okay. Personally, because I just... I, a I lot just... of people do associate white floral scents, some white floral scents, with spring and summer rather than autumn and winter. But this does shine as well in cold weather as well, as well as hot weather. Yeah, I've worn this in cold in weather. Autumn, I can wear it in cold that. weather and, yeah, maybe... Whereas, I would say... Lanterdy, you could wear that in winter. The right. Givenchy Lanterdy, for mm, sure, as yeah, well as summer. Yeah. Yeah. So nine and a half out of ten for Carnival yeah, Flower. So okay, now the last one, which is a bit of a, what do you call it? A, is it a deal breaker or a, a twist? I haven't a full bottle of yet. So I'm, I tested the sample. Now this, I'll put a picture on the screen. This is, I'll put the picture on the screen. I'm not even going to say the name at the moment. So Richard, I'm going to let you. I'm going to spray just a little bit. If I can see the hot. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's quite nice. Now, I would say, yeah, it's it's very different. Can I just test it on paper there? Yeah. Might be even better on your skin. But... Yeah, it's so, smell it on my skin. Oh, yeah, that is different. Yeah, um, oh, now that's a problem, isn't it? Yeah, if you smell it again, mm. yes, you may kiss my hand. Oh, that's it's do that's you know what? Do you know what? It's with, that with carnal flower, yes, it has. It's got, to yeah, be. yeah, it is by Robert Piguet, and it's a, a very old. It's a very old scent, and I don't mean old scent as this is this is old, but it first came out in 1948. So it was quite avant-garde at the time because it was just after the war. Um, Germaine Sellier was the perfumer. Now the notes, according to Fragrantica, is how complex it is. It opens up with peach, orange blossom, hyacinth, green leaves, mandarin orange, and bergamot. That's only in the top. The heart, tuberose, is a tuberose white floral bomb. Jasmine, gardenia, osmanthus, which is a yellow floral, lily of the valley, carnation, which gives a bit of a spiciness, white iris, gives it a bit of a powderiness, violet root, coriander, rose, and rose geranium. That's in the heart. Now, I don't really pick up rose in this scent. In the base, it's got musk, sandalwood, amber, oak moss, vetiver, and cedarwood. So it is a cacophony. So what would you rate this fragrance? Where would you wear it? Yeah, I think it, you could wear it wherever you want. Yeah, it's, it is it is really, really beautiful. I'm a bit late to the game in trying this because the tuberose lovers out there, and you know who you are, I'm looking at you, yes. The tuberose lovers out there ra love Fraca. Fraca, Carnal Flower, um, they are... Michael Kors, they are like the tuberose bombs. But I think this is very different to Michael Kors or even Carnal Flower. I mean, now they've dried down. This is Carnal Flower on this hand here. Yeah, that's And nice. then that's Fraca. 
and that one's nice as well. Yeah, I would yeah. rate those evenly the same, nine and nine a half. Nine and a half out of yeah. ten. So it is then a full bottle worthy. Well, yes, we. I will be getting this then. So there we go. Um, any questions you'd like to ask, darling? Can I change my school? I knew he would say that. Yes, it is. A, I think it, well, it, it, it costs more than I thought when I first looked at it. If you look around, you will get good deals. But yeah, Fraca by Robert Piguet. Now, I know that Veronica says, you know, Veronica, she loves this because she loves tuberose. Tammy loves fragrance. She loves tuberose. Um, perfume Ho. Yes, that's her name, the Perfume Ho. Our beloved Lulu, she loves tuberose. Um, it's, it's a, I think, yeah. When I first sprayed this, I actually wasn't sure, but then when it dried down, I thought, oh, this is really, really lovely. It's quite a strong scent. So is that still, because you said that's 1948, didn't you? Mm. Is that still the original 1948? No, it is the reformulated version. Reformulated. Now, you can get the pre-reformulated versions. I don't know how many times they reformulated it. Maybe once, maybe twice, I don't know. But it's like very hard and rare to find and i'm not actually sure i'd want to get a pre-reformulated version i'm quite happy with this version here because it performs really well i would say this is just just slightly sweeter than carnal flower i would say carnal flower does have that more woodiness coming through a bit more earthiness coming through where I don't know where the sweetness is coming from. Scents on my skin, even indolic scents on my skin, seem to go sweet. My skin kind of like... That's why, personally, I think I don't really wear a lot of gourmand scents, scents that smell like foodie, because once they're on my skin, they go so incredibly sweet that I find it a bit cloying and nauseating. So... You shall be purchasing this for me, won't you, darling? If we can find a bottle. Oh, I found sites where there are bottles, honey. Let me tell you. Yes. Let me tell you, darling. So out of ten, nine and a half. Yeah. Nine and a half. So carnal flower and fracker. So what would be top spot? Out of those two. Yes. still go with um, the bigger bottle you've got there. Carnal Flower. Yeah. So Carnal Flower is number one. Mm -hmm. Fraca is number two. And I would probably say then that Givenchy Lantardy is number three then. Yes. Yeah. Right. So these are the top three scents. So anything else to add? Do I need an overdraft? Yeah, well, that noise probably says it all. <laughs> yeah, but the money. So, yes. Well, no, you don't need an overdraft. No, no, you don't need an overdraft. You just maybe forego a, a, a MiFi. No, I'm only kidding. Right. Okay. So, what are your top tuberose scents? Hit them down there. I want to see all of them in the comment section. But until next time, it's goodbye from me. And me as well, I suppose, yeah. Bye. Okay. It's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from him. And if you want to see if you want to see Richard in a video. Nope. He just he was in one you were you were in one of my videos. Oh, that was a one time only. I know. Now it's been repeated. Yeah. That was when I hit one K. Yeah. So I'm edging towards 5K.
5,000 followers. So, yeah, so you might make another appearance. Please get me to 5K, and then Richard's going to be in that video. Do we want to see him? Yes, we do, because he's a big, lovable teddy bear. So until next time, we'll see you in the next video. It's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from him. And Electra, Electra. And it's goodbye from Electra. Bye.